Hello everybody and welcome again to my channel. This is Teacher Eman and now we're going to discuss religion and the belief systems. For religion, we're going to talk about animism, monotheism versus polytheism, institutionalized or the organized religion, then the separation of the church and the state. A belief system is a set of beliefs regarding what is true and false, what is good or bad, what is beautiful and ugly, what is acceptable by society, and what is considered as unacceptable. A belief system usually possesses the foundation principles on which a religion, a science, a culture, or a philosophy is based but may not necessarily be religion, science, the culture, or the philosophy itself. Religion is a belief system that relates humanity to the transcendental. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya sa ating mundo. It is some, para may another dimension or another world sila. And just like culture, it has its own set of rules, norms, values, and rituals which are generally accepted by its group of believers. According to Emil Durkheim, religion answers all the unanswered questions of human existence. Most of the things that human reason cannot comprehend as of the moment can find answers in transcendental ideas such as religion. Now, what is animism? During the old days when science was not yet dominant, our ancestors could not understand many things in nature. Our primitive ancestors were compelled to come up with mythical explanation to many things they saw in nature. Most, if not all, of the ancient cultures are animistic. Animistic is the belief that all things found in nature are guided and inhabited by spirits and deities. Thus, primitive cultures attribute the rising of the sun to the sun god, that the lightning and thunders are ruled by deities and gods, that the trees and the lands are all animated by the spirits. In order for nature to be kind to them, our ancestors perform sacrifices and rituals to ensure the good behavior or good favor of the gods. What are the common features of animism? This includes the existence of souls or spirits which are viewed as the life force of all things. From human beings, animals, plants, and even non-living things, and even phenomena. The souls and spirits are found in nature. They may take form of plants, animals, trees, and etc. There exists a spirit world. There is a world where unattached spirits dwell. Such spirits may be evil and may bring chaos, hunger, death in the worlds of humans. There are human beings in the community who have the capacity to access the spirit world in order to communicate and control the evil spirits, ayun ay mga tinatawag nila na shaman. The spirits of human beings survive physical death. Their spirits may go back to the world in form of natural objects or can become one of the unattached spirits that bring evil to the world. In the olden times, people had to contend with many spirit gods and deities. This is the reason why animism is usually polytheistic or the belief of many gods. In early Philippines, we have what we call Bathala as the highest god even as we have the Watas or the goddess of the land and even Anitos which are spirits of nature. Now, let's go with monotheism versus polytheism. Monotheism is the belief in one god, while polytheism is the belief of many gods. 
The foundation of polytheism is the belief that there are different gods and goddesses that typically have physical bodies and have human characteristics. Parang sino nga pinapanood natin sa mga TV. Such deities are representations of forces of nature and are accorded with their own supernatural capacities. In most polytheistic traditions, some gods are important than others. So parang may hierarchy, may mas malakas, may mas mahina. Examples of this is in Greek, where Zeus or Zeus has always been regarded as the lord of all gods, though not exactly the most powerful of them all. In Hindu tradition, Brahma has always been the chief god and all others have emanated from him. So siya yung pinanggalingan. The following are the characteristics of a polytheistic religion. Gods of polytheistic religions are many with one having with each one having their own personalities, needs and desires. These gods intervene in our daily life of people and each has each one governed various aspects of human life. Gods of polytheistic religions are thought to have the qualities, vices, and defects of human being, but their physical appearances are rarely human. Though human in their personalities and characteristics, they but they have their divine characteristics which belong to a different order of reality not attainable for men. Gods are immortal, but they are need neither omnipotent nor omni omniscient. There is no single theory of belief because each god has the capacities to circumvent the other. Polytheistic religions are closely related to the cultural, social and political conditions of the society where it exists. It forms rituals and belief systems are typically representative of the culture where it can be found. Kaya kung gusto niyo manood dito, alam ko merong ginawa ang Disney yata na ganito ang pelikula. Siguro ilagay ko na lang sa ano kung ano siya. Now let's go with monotheism. Purposes that there is only one God who was all-powerful and who had the capacity to intervene in the world. Monotheistic religions are believed to have developed out of Abraham and his descendants. Some of the largest monotheistic religions today include Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Some of the common characteristics of monotheistic religions include God is omnipotent, He is all-powerful, and also omniscient, which is all-knowing. Sa amin naman, meron pa kami isa, which is omnipresent. So, present siya kahit saan. God is a creator who sustains and maintains the order in the world. God is incomparable to any image or representation. Next topic, institutionalized or organized religion. An institutionalized or organized religion is called a church. Unlike religious traditions, organized religions have beliefs and rituals which are formally established and systematically arranged. Religions become institutionalized when they have the following elements also referred to as the five C's of organized religion. They are called creed, code, community of believers, and community services. A cult is a set of rituals and sacred practices, items, and objects, religious practices that believers do and adhere to. It usually refers to some supernatural, superhuman, and transcendental power or promise that attracts followers. The beginning of religion usually starts with a cult. Creed. As the cult expands and develops, the members are questioned and challenged from the outside. They also need to assure the next generation that their message will be transmitted from its original form. Thus, members of an organized religion are compelled to come up with the written sets of beliefs that would unite all members. This 
is their profession of their faith. So para sa atin, pakay Bible. Code, as the organization of the community of believers progress through time, it cannot be prevented that some organizational issues and processes need to be systematized. They need to come up with a set of standards, processes, organizational procedures, and laws that would govern the whole membership. Questions pertaining to the organizational structure of the church, what constitutes the church hierarchy, what constitutes the laity, and other things need to be answered in legal form. This is the code of the church. Community of believers, all individuals who adhere to the set of beliefs of a certain religion are members of that religious community of believers. So sila yung mga miyembro mismo ng simbahan. And community services, these are the things that the church does to its members and for the outside world. This includes such activities as having regular worship or services for the believer, putting up schools, hospital, and doing humanitarian services are just among others. Last topic is the separation of the church and the state. The separation of the church and the state is the political distance in the relationship within, between religious organization and the state or the government. It refers to the creation of secular state with or without legally explicit church-state separation and to the disestablishment. The changing of an existing formal relationship between the church and the state, although the concept is older, the exact phrase separation of the church and the state is derived from walls of separation between the church and the state, which is coined by Thomas Jefferson. The principle that govern, government must maintain an atri, uh, attitude of neutrality towards religion. In U.S., the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution not only allows citizens the freedom to practice any religion of their choice, but also prevents the government from officially recognizing or favoring any religion. So that's my topic for today. So thank you very much for watching. So if you are new to my channel, you can subscribe to my channel and also hit the notification bell and also please like my like this video. And I will see you again on my next video.